Welcome to the Power of the Word, brought to you by Grace Apostolic Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jamaica. This week, we continue to press to the throne of grace. Stay tuned for special directives in prayer at the end of today's broadcast. To lead us in prayer, we invite Brother Kitson Sherman. Mighty God, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for your goodness towards us. We want to thank you for bringing us here one more time in worship. Lord, we present ourselves before you. We pray that you will consecrate us for your service, Lord. Lord, we present our church family before you, wherever they are in their living rooms at this time. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for your goodness towards us. We want to thank you for your love towards us. Lord, we present, Lord God, our nation before you and all the nations of, of this world. Lord, we present, Lord God, those who are ill, those who are suffering from various illnesses, Lord Jesus, including that of the COVID-19. Lord, you are healing. You are our source of strength. We pray, Lord God, that you will stretch forth your hands and you will bring healing to them. Lord, we have no other hope but you this morning. We pray, Lord God, for those who are working in healthcare, for the doctors, Lord, for the nurses, for the lab techs, Lord Jesus. We pray that you will give them wisdom and insight, Lord Jesus, as they stand at the front line, Lord Jesus, to battle this virus. We pray, mighty God, for those who are grieving and who are suffering loss. We pray that you'll be a comfort to them, Lord God. We pray for the leaders of this country, Lord, that you will grant them insight, Lord God, and the leaders of the other countries of this world. Lord God, we pray that you will be with them. We pray that you will cause them to make decisions that are sensible and wise. Lord, we put ourselves before you. Lord, help us to be obedient to the instructions, Lord God, of government, Lord God. We pray that you will cause us, Lord God, to continue to seek your face, Lord, even though we cannot meet, Lord God, face to face. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will give us, Lord God, the strength to endure, Lord Jesus, all that is happening for those who have lost their jobs, for those families, Lord Jesus, that are suffering Lord God at this time we pray that you will open a door and that you will provide for them Lord Jesus we present Lord God all the churches across the island Lord God today into your hands we pray that you will continue to keep your people Lord our confidence is in you we give you the glory we give you the honor we give you the praise in your name we pray amen we continue this morning's service with the reading of the word from the book of Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 4 through to 8. This will be read by Sister Nereen Nooks. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. This is the word of the Lord. Though all around me is darkness, Earthly joys all flown. My Savior whispers his promise, I will never leave thee alone. Let today's word encourage your heart. Dr. Dennis speaks to us today on the topic, God has not forgotten you. Blessings be multiplied to you and your house. 
Indeed, God has been good, <clears throat> and so we thank him for his daily supply of love and mercies. The word of the Lord to our hearts today is, God has not forgotten about us. My beloved brethren, some of us will sleep and some won't. But no matter what happens, God has not forgotten us. The Apostle Paul put it this way, For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Or whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. While we live, the aim must be to do the Lord's will. And even when we die, we will be fully resigned to his will. We are not at our own disposal. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 6 to 9 reads, The Lord kill it and make it alive. He bring it down to the grave and bring it up. The Lord make it poor and make it rich. He bring it low and he lift it up. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he had set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. Far by strength shall no man prevail. My beloved brethren, the news worldwide is mind-blowing. Fifteen trillion U.S. dollars have been wiped off the world's stock market. Oil has slumped by 60% as Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Mexico, and South Africa have seen their currencies plummet more than 20%. Volatility and corporate borrowing market stress have spiked and the governments fear the whole sector could be ruined in total debt. But in all of this, our God is still in control. He's in control of all the affairs of mankind, including the world's economy. Saints of God, this is the day, the hour the minute to start allowing our God to be in control, our total control of our lives. He has not and will never forget his own, but it requires action on our part. Exodus chapter 2 verse 24 declares, So God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abram, with Isaac, and with Jacob. I therefore, my fellow brethren, call him Jehovah Zakar, which means the Lord who remembers, the Lord who has not forgotten us. Listen, my beloved, as far as God is concerned, we cannot escape from his divine memory bank. World history records 1918 to 1920. The Spanish flu, also known as the 1918 flu pandemic, H1N1 virus was an unusual deadly influenza pandemic. Lasting from January 1918 to December 1920, it infected 500 million people, about one third of the world's population at that time. The number of deaths was estimated to be at least 50 million worldwide, with about 675,000 occurring in the United States and 100,000 in the Caribbean. But no matter the crisis, the plague, the epidemic, or the pandemic, God has not forgotten his people. My beloved brethren, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, I can still speak with confidence that this current pandemic too will pass. On the other hand, it seems as though God is disciplining the world. And while we may not understand it, we must know that this suffering is still a sign of love. But I must encourage us to pray. And no more than ever, 
pray still, prayer still makes sense. Prayer, my fellow friends, is the key. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 13 to 14 reads, If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locust to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence upon my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's the word of the Lord, my fellow friends. If we repent and turn to God, he will hear and he will answer and bring an end to all the pandemic and this planet. Prior, my beloved friends and brethren, is not an advice or counsel to God. Neither is it a dictate that we make as to how, amen, the Almighty should operate. It is not an endless, meaningless communication. But prior, my beloved, my fellow saints, is the means by which our spirits are lifted up to trust and appreciate God in everything. Oh, my fellow brethren, he is endless in his supply of mercy and love. Let us therefore enlarge our capacity to receive what he is doing and what he is allowing, my fellow saints. Despite the pandemic, I say again, prior is key. For our God will never forget us if we pray. Let us all make this crisis be our season of victory. For when we repent and turn to him, he will bless us. Yes, even now, right where you are, in whatever situation you find yourself, turn to God now and receive your victory. The Lord told Nicodemus in John 3, 5, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a spiritual and holy, and that which is born of the Spirit resembles the Spirit. For as he who is who begot, so is he who is begotten of him. Therefore, the spiritual regeneration is essentially necessary to prepare the soul for a holy spiritual kingdom. My fellow brethren, the baptizer can baptize with water in the name of Jesus Christ, but it's the Lord Jesus only who can baptize with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Open your spirit, my fellow friends and brethren, to receive a double portion of God's peace and reassurance. Receive an overflow of his anointing being downloaded upon us. Receive it into your soul. He knows your name. And as long as we will seek him, he will not forget us. Hallelujah. And so the prophet Isaiah in chapter 43 verse 1 says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. My fellow brethren and friends, heaven is not under quarantine. He is not threatened by any pandemic that we might be facing. So call upon his name right now. His name is Jesus and he's listening to your cry if he forgets our, amen, attention, he will, if he gets, I'm sorry, our attention, he will step in and answer. So let us call him for he is now listening to every one of us. In Isaiah 65 verse 24, he encouraged us by saying, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. With the world seemingly being turned upside down. Confusion and despair and every hand. Lift up your faith in the God of heaven 
who is still in control. No pandemic can shake him. Our God has not forgotten. Amen. For Hebrews 13 and verse 5 states, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Psalm 94 verse 14 says, For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Bad news can turn our world upside down and push us into irrational conclusions. Like God has abandoned us for he, as if he doesn't care. Human nature reaches, amen, for a reason. Any reason and for someone to blame. In our confusion, we often target God. But that's not the nature or character of our God. God has not changed, amen, in his desires towards us. We have changed. He still wants fellowship with his children. Revelation 3 and verse 20 said, Behold, God said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. God's track record is impeccable, my fellow brethren. Our God has not and will never forget his children. Everyday challenges can be a test of our faith. No less a global pandemic. But rise, amen, every day and choose faith over fear. Hallelujah. The scriptures exhaust us. There is no fear in love. But perfect love, my fellow friends and brethren, it out fear because fear has torment he that fear it is not made perfect in love first john 4 18 and in colossians 3 15 the apostle wrote and let the peace of god rule in your hearts firstly let us remember amen to let faith and peace amen not fear rule our hearts Although everything is changing at rapid speed, my fellow friends and brethren, our God remains constant. He is the unmoved mover who had gathered the wind in his fists, who had bound the waters in a garment, who had established all the ends of the earth. My fellow friends and brethren, the Lord of hosts is his name. If God took care of us before this pandemic, then any and every pandemic in our lives is but a light thing in the sight of our God. If we but seek him and put our faith in him, God, my fellow friends, will come true for us. He's the same, amen, faithful God before this outbreak and that he will continue to be the one, amen, when it is past. Lo, he said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. My fellow brethren, our faith can be steady because our God is faithfully unchanging. This truth alone can strengthen us not to give in to fear. As the apostle wrote to 2 Timothy, amen, to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, for God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear can rob us of three essential gifts from God that we desperately need at this time. Number one, as the apostle said, power. Power, my fellow friends and brethren, enables us to live a life of faith when it is not easy. Number two, love. Love, my fellow friends and brethren, enables us to share and sacrifice when it is not convenient. Amen. And a sound mind, number three. A sound mind allows us to experience peace. Even when everything seems to be going upside down, downside out, we can have peace. There is too much at stake to give in to fear during this season. 
No more than ever. We need power. Love, oh my fellow brethren, and a sound mind. And let us not forget, as I just quoted previously, the scripture said, perfect love, I repeat, cast out all fear. My beloved, let us choose faith. Knowing that our God has not forgotten us, while we can still remain, amen, and maintain our faith because of our unchanging God, it is still important to exercise wisdom instead of becoming a victim of fear. If there is any action you or I can take, amen, to protect ourselves, do it. Use wisdom, O oh fellow brethren, and listen to sound advice from our medical advisors. Amen. And choose prior and not panic. And let us use every opportunity, amen, to be communicable in prior. Prior, O oh my fellow brethren, is the exact prescription that the Bible gives us as, amen, the cure for anxiety. And I read Philippians 4 verse 6 which tells us, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Jesus called his church a house of prayer. Amen. As written in Matthew 21 verse 13, he said, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. We can panic or we can choose to pray, but we cannot do both, my fellow brethren and friends. So let us choose to exercise faith in God as we pray, for he has not forgotten us. One of the Hebrew names for God is el Rohai, the God who sees. And we know that he's a God that sees us. One of God's characteristics is that he is omnipresent. He's present everywhere you're at. God sees our victories. He sees our defeats. He sees when we are happy. God sees when we are sad. Hello, friends and brethren. He sees when we have moved more enough. Amen. He sees when we are in luck. Nothing that we do is hidden from him. Nothing that we face catches him off God. God sees us in health. He sees us in sicknesses. He is the God who sees our Hallelujah. Somebody need to lift their hands and give praise to this God. And he sees you right now, wherever you are. You are not alone. He will not forget to bless you, my fellow brethren and friends. You have a right to glorify him. You have a right to enjoy him. You have a right to thank him. As I speak this blessing upon us today, let's receive it and give the Lord thanks. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Receive that peace right now. Receive that strength right now. Receive that confidence right now. Receive, amen, that authority right now and keep your mind stayed upon him and let's all remember this. He had not and will not forget us. God bless you. Dwell in peace today and dwell in victory. God bless you. Thank you very much. As we continue with our month of prayer and fasting, here are some points. Pray prayers of repentance, consecration, and recommitment to the Lord, surrendering our desires, our will, and our entire self to Him. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14, James 5, 14, and 16. Secondly, Pray petitioning the Lord to intervene in the spread of the coronavirus. Pray in Jesus' name for mercy that the virus will recede from this day forward and that the numbers of those infected will recede rapidly. 1 John 5, 14-15 Thirdly, pray for those who are sick that they will have access to the care and treatment they need. Pray for peace and perseverance amid suffering. Pray for those in isolation who are cut off from their normal routines and support systems that they would seek strength in their time of difficulties. 
pray for encouragement for the thousands in quarantine waiting to find out if they have the virus. Psalm 46 verse 1. Number 4. Pray for all health workers who are caring for those with COVID-19. Pray for their protection from the virus, for stamina during long and intense hours, and for safe protocols to be observed in the healthcare institutions in order to keep them protected. Pray for health workers to seek the Lord during this crisis. Psalm 107 verse 28. Number five, pray for grieving families who have lost loved ones to the coronavirus. Even as their hearts are breaking, pray that they will know the nearness and comfort of the Spirit of the Lord. Pray that they will feel compassion from the Lord and from friends and neighbors coming around them. Pray against despair. Pray for new mercies every morning. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7. Number 6. Pray for pastors serving their churches and communities affected and infected by COVID-19. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord will give these shepherd leaders the right words for the right time and the right actions for each situation. Pray that they will speak the gospel in heart, word, and deed to each person they minister to. Pray for the pastors who have not yet received or accepted that they will receive the revelation of who Jesus is so that their congregations will be saved. Philippians 2 verses 10 and 11. 7. Pray for the body of Christ worldwide that the church will rise up to prayer and to support the sick and their caregivers in practical and sacrificial ways. Pray for the church to be a light on a hill in hospitals, communities, and cities where God has placed us. Pray for an outpouring of love, compassion, and service in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 24 to 27. 8. Pray for the government officials and decision makers who are leading countries and organizations through the crisis. We acknowledge that the Lord has allowed each one to be in the place of influence during this time. Pray they will work together to mobilize resources quickly and effectively to where they are needed most. Pray for all those who are working behind the scenes and for the good administration and execution of response efforts in our country and worldwide. Jeremiah 29, 7. Number 9. Pray for a cushioning of financial impact on individuals, families, and businesses that are ruined by the halt in many sectors of the economy. Pray for those who have lost and those who may lose jobs and salaries. For each one, we pray new beginnings with the Lord walking by their side. Jeremiah 29 verses 11 through to 12. Number 10. Pray for our mission, co-workers worldwide today, especially those serving in areas acutely impacted by COVID-19. Pray for wisdom for each ministry team to know how to carry out their responsibilities. We pray that ministries would not have to shut down, but the Lord will carry them through this difficult time for his glory. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 8 to 10. Prayer leaders are asked to connect with persons in their groups and set the prayer time for each group. Be blessed.